I have about eight people are going to watch this video, so so that's really important that I make a video. Hello, this video is about the uh, levelized cost of electricity and levelized cost of storage, and I'm, it's my second attempt, and I'm a little frustrated. Um, and I get nervous about making videos. I've made videos about levelized cost and carrying charges and all that before. But in this video, I want to show you how in a fairly... You can do things in a simple way and incorporate the costs of storage and batteries with different, all sorts of different scenarios and different uses and everything else and you can put them in a really kind of simple framework without going you know crazy like i have done in the past by going through hour by hour usage and all of that so here's what i'm going to do i'm i'm, I'm going to use this as an opportunity also to show you some little excel analysis and excel tricks related to uh, carrying charges which are the frankly the complicating things in in this in this lcoe and uh, uh, yes that's it and i'm going to show you how to how to make scenarios with different you know target irrs interest rates inflation rates and all that Sorry, I've been out of it a little bit, you know. I won't talk about my sister's accusations of my psychological problems in this one. I'm kind of tired. The the uh, now, if you take a solar project, okay, and here's what's happened to. I happen to be in a place where the internet is not working so well and not in a real developed place right now i guess uh, uh the the <coughs> excuse me for for, for, for this uh we're going to take a cost and i was going to just just while i was doing this i was going to show you what's happened to the cost per kw of solar and I'm, done this many 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 times and showing you how the cost of panels has plummeted and that right now the cost of panels is about 200 usd per kw or less it went less than 200 usd per kw okay if you know the cost per kw then you can perhaps co convert the cost per kw to a kw year that's the carrying charge problem. Once you have the cost per kW year, you can convert a year to an hour by using the fact that there, well, it's not really a fact that the 8766 six hours in a year, if you include leap years, if you don't include leap years, it's 8760. And then you can put some uh, uh, operation and maintenance costs together with that and, and arrive at this famous levelized cost of electricity. Of course, the problem of comparing a levelized cost of electricity for a, 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 a something where somebody can't turn it on and off. Somebody upstairs turns it on and off, not you. You can turn a nuclear, well, a nuclear can't turn on, on and off very well, but you can turn a gas plant or a diesel plant on and off, and you have to pay fuel for those. So we can add those in, but this business of comparing a solar project to a, a, a natural gas project or a nuclear project is a little bit tricky. Nuclear, I think I have a really low cost here for some biased reason. Now, the, the, uh, 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 the, the real point is there are only four things. And when you look at these studies, like from this Lazar, I'm going to look at, oh, look at all these graphs. Oh, you can take this and go crazy with different graphs there. Football field diagrams I've talked about, you know, in the past. And this is the 19, 2019, it's the year 2000s by now. This is the 
year 2019 version of their storage analysis. Okay, and we're going to incorporate some of that stuff just because I don't have that much better information on cost, but we'll go through it. Now, uh, the cost, we, we take the capital cost, we multiply it by a carrying charge rate. And the way I try to explain a carrying charge rate, I'm, it's redundant. I've done this before, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. The way I explain a carrying charge rate is it's like the house payment you have for a year. That's why we have Y here. It's the house payment you have for a year divided by the cost of the house. Well, it's got debt and equity in here, but okay, that's the general idea. So what this carrying charge rate is, if the interest rate was zero, and you'd have 20, or the cost of capital was zero, and you'd have a and, and the inflation rate was zero, and everything was zero, you'd take the, the, the carrying charge rate would simply be equal 1 divided by 25. You just have to recover your cost over 25 years. Of course, you have to pay interest on that cost, and by the time you pay uh, 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 equity capital and uh, everything else, it, it, it could go to 7%, or it could be as low as 5%. We'll talk about the, the issues there, and when we get to the storage, that's going to be a gigantic issue. Okay, now, once we have the cost per kW year, we can take the capacity factor, which is just the average divided by the maximum, and this amount you pay per kilowatt is the maximum, and this it measures just how much of the year you actually use it, so to... What we do is convert a year to an hour, but we, div we don't divide it by the total hours in the year. You divide it by the hours multiplied by the capacity factor. And so far we have uh, one factor, which is the cost, two factor, which is the, the, the carrying charge, three, which is the capacity factor, and finally, we need to include the, the, the cost of operation and maintenance. Each of, once you have these four items, you're essentially finished. This one's the hard one to compute. This one is dramatic. This is the revolution in solar power. This is another thing that's changed because the the bifacial and tracking and everything else, we can get more, potentially get more, and this is where you do all your resource studies. And the O&M, hmm, shouldn't be a big deal. I don't understand why people pay so much for it. And I don't think, I've, I've heard that in Nepal, you they clean these panels once a week. Oh my God. Uh, well, maybe the labor cost is cheap. In other places, you let it rain and just let it be cleaned by that. All right. So, and and uh, we have to consider degradation and everything else, but that can all be incorporated in this little carrying uh, uh, charge rate. Now, if we have some some uh, 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 batteries, okay, we'll. We can just have the normal kind of cost. Now you're going to say, oh, you need to make a big project finance model, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, I'm not. I'm just going to say, well, I'm going to take the, the costs of the solar. This time I have a different carrying charge rate. And the cost went down by half. Okay, even though I, maybe I should put a back there thing, the O&M cost. Okay, and then we're going to see, well, how many hours of storage do you really need? Because the cost of batteries is a function of the amount of storage. If we only for one, we needed one hour of storage to back things up, then our cost addition is not, when I say back things up, used for ancillary services and things where we just, we don't need it for a whole lot. We just need it for these spikes and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we can incorporate the number of hours here and get the total cost. Now, this is a debatable thing, and people are saying, ah, oh, I want the cost of batteries to come down to 100. Maybe it'll be lower. Maybe it'll be kind of like solar. 
how many batteries, how much storage do we really need? Now, when we pay this cost, when we want to use some energy, we might have these limitations. I've been told, and I think I'm, that's right, that if you let your battery go all the way down to zero on your computer or your phone, that's going to suck. And the battery's life is going to be a lot shorter. So maybe we need a little more, uh, 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 we have to get a little more capacity, maybe, and, and we have to pay for that. So maybe we need an extra 10%. Uh, uh, capacity so we might uh, need to increase our cost now this carrying charge rate if you could get it down to five percent that would be great but the carrying charge rate is a function of lifetime of the batteries and the degradation of the batteries and we really have to study these degradation lifetime uh, 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 and lifetime really those are the two big ones and then we have so we lose something when we store it and unstore it and we should, ref we, we, we should reflect that. Now, I have to be a little bit more careful with this one, I think. Um, it depends on how much uh, uh, batteries you have compared to, to the solar. If you're just using it for your children to go to, 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 to read at night, and you're not going to use any solar during the day, you're going to lose more than if you have a fridge and all that stuff. Uh, 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 during the day, and I need to put some solar. But when we put, do this, we can just kind of add the costs all together and get a final uh, levelized cost, and it's that easy. And I always thought, oh, no, it's much, much harder. But we can get an indication then of what kind of, what kind of cost per kilowatt hour do you really need for these... Uh, uh, um, for the batteries really to start making sense and, and before we start making all our real detailed hourly models and all that <coughs> we should really understand what those costs are and what those how those various factors work into it so that's what i'm going to do with this video now before i kind of get started well as i am getting started what the hell was that about uh the the um Let's talk about these carrying charge rates. Now, if you just had a simple case, if you had a simple case, and I made a really simple case here, we have no inflation, no degradation, no, no, uh, uh, whatever, uh, 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 debt, no interest rates, and then what I'm going to do is put these factors into a little model here and when i have nothing like that it's going to give me a carrying charge rate of 11.02 percent in fact i'm just going to put this 11.202 over here okay now this carrying charge model it's like incorporating your whole kind of project finance modeling analysis in, and I've talked about it before, so if I'm redundant, I'm sorry about this. But I'm going to be a little different this time. Okay. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it, uh, uh, we, we have blah, blah, blah. I can't get some words out today, but we have an inflation rate, degradation rate, equity return, and all that stuff. And then we make a little project finance model somewhere down there. Okay. With some... <coughs> ultimately get to some financial statements and here uh oh it's 9.99 instead of the target rate of 10 percent and if you do that you it results in a carrying charge rate of 11.02 percent and in this very 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 simple case Okay, and there's our, our equity IRR, and I used some economic depreciation and was able to, which I've discussed a lot elsewhere, and was able to kind of show you that you're earning a 10% return on equity, you're getting a 10% IRR, everything's working with 10%. And if you want to prove that, I can put equal PMT, and I can just put in a 10% rate, and then I can put in 25 years. And then I can put in a minus one. And that will give me 
the payment, that's the percent payment on one. It's like a simple mortgage payment. Now, if I would change the plant life and say, ah, oh, our plant life will last 35 years, then our, our, our return will go down. And if I change the interest rate, or the, not the interest rate, the IRR to 12, 5%, perhaps I should press shift control P, then I get a, a carrying charge rate that's much lower. You can kind of see what's happening. If I put zero, it's just going to give me one divided by this. So if I put 25 in here. Now, what I have done is uh, put diff for different technologies, I've put different assumptions in, in different places. Here's the problem in the world. You know, we, we get different. Uh, interest rates and different returns and for different technologies we have different lifetimes and we have construction periods and the project finance model will incorporate all of these things. Now, we're still not finished. If I have an inflation rate, if I put an inflation rate here and I, I did the payment here and this this is the let me put our final carrying charge rate that comes out of the model here. Okay, so we've got a little engine kind of thing. And if I put an inflation rate of, of uh, 2%, here's what happened. It, the carrying charge rate goes down, and that's because you have a lower cost today, which will increase by 2%. And this gives you the cost today which is the real cost you should be using it's ridiculous if there's inflation if there if you're putting in a, a nominal interest rate a nominal equity return everything in nominal terms and then you're saying people today should be pay exactly the same price they pay in 20 years even if the interest rate is a measly on uh, inflation rate is the measly on two percent the real cost the, the, the cost of the project today, in today's currency, will be much, much less. And if you put a flat rate, it's distorted. So that's why we need an inflation rate. A degradation rate is almost the opposite. If you have a degradation rate, what happens now is you have to get a bigger solar panel today to get the same amount of power in the future. And you're going to have to replace that or use something else. And we have to reflect that, that degradation, which I've said again, is happening in my brain. It's just going down and down and down and down and down. Uh, uh, that, uh, 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 that's reflected like the opposite of an inflation rate. Okay. Now, the big deal here is that the first thing I did is I just put a, this is nothing. I put a little, uh, uh, let's do some Excel. Now I'm going to do some Excel. Okay, let's decide which project we have used. Now if I, oops, oh, shoot. So, uh, okay, if I select this area, I'm going to use a little conditional formatting to tell you which project we're on right now. Okay. And all you do is you go to the home page and you go to, uh, and of course, shit. God darn it. Okay, now we're okay. Then you go to the home page. I had two pages selected. You go to conditional format, and then you are fancy. You don't use all this gimmick crap. You hit new rule, and then after you hit new rule, you hit use a formula. So you use the last ones. And then you always start all the way on the top left and go up and say, well, I'm good. this one is going to be allowed to, is going to stay in column row number four. And I put dollar signs to keep it in row number four, but let it float. And then we put a little, uh, uh, this code number determines which, which, of the, it, which of the numbers selected. And then you make a very important executive decision about how to color this stuff. And maybe I'll color it here. Do you think that? Ooh, that's a little extreme. That's a little bit more mild and soft, I think. And then you, now it kind of screwed up my little uh, other things. But if I now 
select one of these other things. And for once, I'm not going to go through how, how you do this with the developer. You can watch about 20 other videos to get that, but okay. And, and well, I suppose the one thing I had to do is transpose this stuff, the titles, and then just, so I'm contradicting myself. If you right click and go down to format control, just puts a number, it just gives you a number and it just takes those, uh, those columns so we now we're on number three and then if we're on number three right here this is the uh, this is the number okay now what i did next and this is where we're going is i said okay all of these things this for this number three this plant life this equity irr let's put all of those in the carrying charge in fact why don't we do this why don't we put a tab color why don't we make this purple? Purple, that's a good color. And then we go to the carrying charge, Control Alt C. I have to show you the generic macros, which nobody seems to be using ever. And then I'm going to make some rows at the top of the sheet. Now I've done a lot of the, uh, work on this, but I'm, I'm just going to put two, two, two rows on the top. And then we're going to mark links with a tab color from other sheets. I'll use the conditional formatting, and this says I clean it out, or I can leave it un unclean. That means I chain take it out, and I've got a something in D, which is a, like a little sum column. I'll put this. I didn't. That didn't work. But uh, and then we put our other colors in. Okay. And the big thing now is when I color this, you'll see that the inputs. Uh, and it's going a little slowly. Now I'm resuming this video. I had all sorts of interruptions. Um, the, so here, here's what happens. The when I change this code number, the uh, parameters for the carrying charge rate come from this column with the index function that's I've gone over this about a zillion times I'm sorry to review it again here's the difference though I'm going to copy this into the carrying charge right now okay there are my, the nice purple numbers that came from the purple sheet okay and we change the the um, the parameters and I hope things change like the degradation and everything else now there's one thing about this this file that I should tell you I did not make an assumption about the maturity and the reason I didn't is because of something called refinancing and I assumed you refinance and refinance and refinance and you just keep going until the very end of the project life so the capital structure stays the same and you can even have a talk about a whack that stays the same and everything else and this pattern of repayment is a pattern that will make the capital structure stay the same it's like some sort of mixture or it's like corporate finance almost where you keep the capital structure the same over the whole life of the project perhaps you're saying oh, that debt percent shouldn't be so high but that's another issue should have raised it even just now okay so we change this one now let's go to the little excel i want to show so what i want to do then is to be able to have a a, a, a little lcoe page here and on this lcoe page i would like to be able to show any one of these things and i would like to have it remember that this uh, um this offshore amelia whatever was 4.38 instead of 4.39 i just changed the tax assumption i think down here okay and to do that what you need to do is go around and then have this copy and paste to the one copy and paste to the second and all that and I'll just go through the little macro that does that. This is the, the, the main kind of thing. I've got some other stuff here. Okay. All you do is make a 
range name, uh, uh, a range name for all of the different codes. Okay, these are the codes. It goes from one, it should go from one to 13, not 12, excuse me. And that should have, of course, been done with Alt EIS Enter. That's how fast the Alt EIS Enter should be. Okay, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, and then once we have that, the this shit. Uh, let me make sure that I have the codes right. Okay, aha. Uh -huh. Hmm. I'm gonna make this one. Let's let's do it like this. Let's just put codes out here. That's what I probably should have done. Okay, and then I select this. Shift Control F3. And I want to use the right column. That's the one over in the right. Replace it because I wanted to make it a tiny little bit longer. And then on the carrying charge, perhaps I'll do the same thing. And I'll put, I'll name that CCR. This is, I've got to name this just because we're going to make a macro. And on this macro, Shift Control F3. On this macro, we're just going to walk through, change this from one. When we make it one, it'll take and put all of our parameters into our carrying charge analysis. And then we can have a very nice kind of flexible carrying charge or flex a whole project finance model for a whole bunch of different scenarios. And it's essentially just making a scenario analysis essentially I'm making a scenario analysis where these come from the other sheet and we're just going to take these and then copy the this uh, carrying charge and we can retain all of the different parameters for the different kind of sheets and to do that we go around for one to the codes and then you put columns dot count took me a very many years to, to get that one. I never understood why columns were there, but you put columns first and then count. And then you just make this code number here. This is just a range name code, and you just change this from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to blah, 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 blah. blah. Okay? And you don't get afraid to make a simple little macro. And I thought, oh, I don't want to do this. And then we say, take this range CCR, and I'll say, well, just go. It's always got one row and go across all the columns from one to, to, to all that and then make that equal to the computed CCR and the computed CCR is just in this call is just right here it's just right here I, somebody's interrupting me and talking loud, speaking loudly on the phone whatever okay so that's it now the good news about this and perhaps the, the very last thing I think I should do is is put a little thing. And maybe I should put range code equal 1. We should put it back to where we started. You know, oh, God. I, people don't respect me making a video anymore. Okay. So now I'm going to go around it. It's just going to go around each time. It's a basic little tool. Okay, and uh, it's going around and computing the carrying charge for every single one, and we get our carrying charge. Now, the, the, well, it's taking a little bit of time, I guess. I'm going to wait for it to go through, and the big deal is to make this battery carrying charge. Look, it just went up to 17. Okay, and this battery charge, and, and then you see it had a divide by zero on the carrying charge for the total because we didn't have any parameters defined by that. And what happened to the very last one? Number 13, I, I, I don't know what happened to Aha, uh -huh, I didn't make the index function go uh, out all the way. It should have been from Q to... QQ, perhaps that would have done it. Okay, enough. I don't have to. I'm not going to go through the rest of it. It seems that I just uh, redid it. Okay, enough of this. All right, and uh, 
Now let's look, let's focus on our, our, our battery now, because that's really the idea of this whole uh, 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 analysis. If we have, and I'm going to review this, let's, let's go piece by piece. So number one, the person from Nepal, brilliant man named Ashish, he told me he could do rooftop for 700, which I love considering rooftop in other places is 3,000 or 2,000 per kW. And then I said, well, okay, let's just pretend, which is a ridiculous thing. Let's pretend your target IRR is only 8% because you've got a nice stable uh, thing and you, your, 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 your base interest rate has is, is got some hedging in it not all has 2.25 we have an inflation rate we have a degradation rate we're going all the way up to 85 percent how about i'll do a 30 year i'll make it even 30 years and then our capacity factor which he said was about 17 i'm going to put about 18 percent. i think that's what we had and i'm going to say uh we can get our our, our o and cost down to seven now of course i, I just kind of made this up whatever and then we can get our, our our cost of electricity down to three cents that would be fantastic but of course we don't have any electricity during the night so the question is how much battery do we have to put in now there we could imagine three scenarios one scenario would be we have about seven hours of sunlight and we have to take all those seven hours and get them into a battery and let's just review some cost and some other uh, uh, data okay and uh, what i try to do is put some stuff together I've, I've i've gone through this in another video so i'm sorry if i'm repeating but i have some data on the efficiency this is is uh, a, this is 90 percent this is how much you have to get from the discharge after you charge it so there are batteries ranging from 80 to 70 and all that. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll be nicer here. So what happens then is, oh, if it's 80%, this would be 10%, uh, uh, 20%. But right now, so if we have a, uh, uh, I just, I just <laughs> did that ridiculously. This would be 10%. And what happens is then the capacity factor would be, I put it minus 10%, then we lose something on the capacity factor. We get 10% less energy. Now that we could even get even less. And I'm going to go through and see how we can kind of incorporate all of this stuff. Then we have the question of, of, of degradation and, and how we can't go all the way to the bottom because of a depth of discharge limitation. This is this business that you shouldn't let your batteries go all the way down. By the way, I interrupted this and I just had to buy a new battery from, I do have a car. It's a 2001 car. It's an old shitty car. And the battery went bad today while I'm making this video. And the battery, I asked the man at the car store, I tried to put my battery in. I really screwed up. I, whatever i thought i didn't do it right i was swearing like crazy but the man said oh the battery was my old battery was seven years old i took my old battery in and so he said ah yeah no the batteries go uh, about seven years and then it was the battery was obviously totally degraded now the day that so here we have degradation could be from two to four percent per year so let's put our degradation in okay which could affect the 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 uh, uh, carrying charge i'll put two percent okay that's like kind of offsetting our inflation so we get we get a higher rate but then we get a lower rate and kind of whatever and then it's not a good explanation just now okay and then the gross and the net capacity are a little different because we have depth of discharge if we need an extra discharge what we have to do is really buy a bigger battery to serve our to to, to get our load so if we need uh, uh six seven hours of and we have seven hours of sunlight and the cost is 110 what we'd have to do is put an equal 110 
times 1.1 or 1.2, depending on the depth of discharge. If we can't go down, let's put 1.1. We need an extra amount of capacity. So we, we I'm, and we got to pay for the capacity we don't use. So that's how I'll reflect that one. And you, I hope you can see how oh, you can start reflecting all this stuff in the in the thing. Discharging. D i s c h a r g. Discharging. Okay. And then we um, I put some more degradation. So if it's a flow battery, apparently it wouldn't have that. Some more degradation where we can go out to 10 years and see how much lower we have the capacity. And then I said, oh, you should do this. Compute the one divided by the other. Raise it to the one divided by 10 power. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then this, that, then, then, uh, 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 okay. I guess there are different batteries with different degradation and different degradation that happens with age. So the degradation, we've got that kind of uh, uh, issue. Okay. Uh, then uh, uh, here, here's the, the depth of discharge, I guess. We have to, I just added that. So I just did that, and then it's got to have a, a different one now. Here's the latest. Now, this video will be obsolete soon, but I'll put the kind of, the big deal is what the cost of the, the battery is. And that has changed according to this, because a couple of years ago, it was certainly more than this. And I don't know which one to take. We could put something like 200. Now, uh, apparently, there's a, a, a additional EPC cost. So... We could put 200, or some of these have 400, and it depends if we use them for transmission and distribution. We should look kind of if we want a, a longer term duration for the battery here. This goes from 200 to 450. And then if we look at some other data, this is a, a whoops, this is an older one. Uh, I can't remember what year. Here's 200, 300, 400, 200. Okay, I'm looking at the same thing. And before we go and look at some other cost data, we can look at what their real useful life is, which here's an MIT study, apparently, that said a lithium could be 5 to 15, 5 to 20 for a flow battery, maybe longer. For some battery liquidated, uh, 10, 10 years. Uh, uh, Lead acid, lead acid. Well, my battery in my car was was less than that, ten to fifteen. I, I, of course, it depends on the number of uh, 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 charges. You know, if you charge, if you have to do it every single day, we could uh, take this. So let's see the hmm, how many cycles of life do we have these arranging in such a big way? But that lifetime of the of the battery will be a big deal. This one says it's 200 to 400, 100 to 2,000. The ranges are enormous. So I just go through some other batteries. I put this on the website on my battery page. Okay, and I, I've gone through this before. I, I, I apologize for this, but I'm really trying to show you how to incorporate it. Maybe one of these, if this is Bloomberg, Mm, then it must be right, right? Well, maybe they talk to a lot of people, whatever. So they say around 2019, we're supposed to be at 200 for a lithium battery, and it's supposed to go down to 100. So let's do a little bit of, and, and then this doesn't really have, this is the overall cost, and I show you what happened to the cost of solar, which is, I mentioned earlier, and they say a lithium ion battery, uh, to, I guess this is 2016, maybe 2030, and some other ones are ranging in the cost. And, uh, and the, there's something with the cost of a lead acid better it'd be worse. And, uh, I don't know what this means. Is this good or bad? Okay, and then we, we, the lead acid is supposed to have the shorter lifetime, and blah, blah, blah. Here's another battery cost projection. 
we're supposed to be around here and and, and this is uh, for for uh, blended battery price projections whatever that means so the EIA comes in at the top as usual and says the battery is never going to get below 400 and other people say it's going to get down to 100 so that's what we're going to kind of do an analysis of here's another one that says the battery cost is now about 200 okay so let's do the put this all together now if we if we so this was at 100 now if we could really make our battery cost or, I'm sorry our, 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 our lifetime of a battery if it was really 20 that affects the carrying charge dramatically so I'm going to move that uh, to the battery backup kind of section and now our, our uh, carrying charge oops still kind of high uh, let's let's just let's just illustrate it with 30. I hope that changed and it didn't because because I should have just uh, grabbed it from here temporarily that or I should have ran our little program uh, what a hypocrite I am okay if but if we make the battery only 10 year life then we our our costs go up dramatically and all I've done here is take the life of the bat the amount of storage we need because we are going to take all our solar and use it to 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 store the battery and then we're going to discharge the battery so our net capacity factor will be this and we'll get a total cost per kW year of the uh, uh, of, of whatever I just showed you. I hope you see that the the uh, um, framework the framework can still be useful. And then I, I guess I, I should have put a little bit of a one M here. We'll use this bullshit thing. Uh, then I'll, I'll put it here. Okay, I've got to make it bigger. So what do we have? Oops. Okay. And then we we have some O and M, which might be this is the cost per kilowatt hour. So again, to get this per cost per kilowatt year, let's just say it's one. But then, if we, since it's per kilowatt hour, we'd have to multiply it by seven, you know. And okay, so I'm I'm just adding this to the. I don't know how to do this. I'm gonna do this in a horrible way. Okay. Ah, shit. Okay. This one plus seven. Okay. Whatever. And then I. Uh, uh, then on, on this one, uh, we'll you we'll take that total capac to, total O and M and adjust it like we always do. Multiply it by a thousand, divide by eight seven sixty times the capacity factor. Excuse me, fixing this on the fly kind of, and then we got a, a horrible kind of expensive. Suddenly a thirty is an expensive uh, uh, capacity now. Of course. Let's put it to 20, and let's let's say that you know the degradation is is only one is only one percent, and then we can get a lower lower uh, carrying charge, and then our, it, it's it's a little more reasonable. This is still at a very low cost. Now there's only one thing to really think about, though, and think about the fact that well, okay, what happens if we uh, uh, use our battery for a refrigerator and the refrigerator runs during the time of solar or we 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 use it for some fans and then we don't need all our solar just to uh, 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 run the battery and for me it's like accounting it's like how do, not accounting counting how many batteries do we need in order to how many batteries do we need in order uh, uh, on, on top of the, the solar so we'd have to kind of make a little thing up but if we used our battery uh, our, our solar totally coincident with the load then we don't need any 
So here's my uh, explanation of how to compute the storage hours and put some storage hours in our simple framework. Okay. Um, I have a model from UNDP. Look at it. Shift Control C con table of contents. And they this is some kind of mini grid LCOE tool. The only thing I'm using is two things. One is the the pattern of solar power over the day. And I don't think it's so shocking that this solar power should have the peak between noon and one in the in the afternoon. I hope I got that right. All right, and then they also give some load profiles on some lamps and refrigerators and so on and so forth, and they kind of just have a little bit of a one and a zero when you use it. So they're assuming you your refrigerator uses the same amount during the day, not an unreasonable assumption. And then if you have a television, for some reason you'll only watch television in the morning. I don't really know why. Uh, and you'll use your refrigerator. I don't really know why you wouldn't use it in the morning, and then you'd use it during the day. It would have some stuff and, and not else. And then you have some lamps, and you'd only use your lamps between 6 in the evening and 10 in the evening. That's fine. All right. When we put this together, I... So I, I, I put a little story, I call it just counting. It's just for me to get this kind of long. So I first put the lights here. And I said, here are our four hours of lights. And I took our pattern of solar during the day and put a percentage. So I hope uh, I had to make a, a couple of edits here. So here's our, here are our lighting demands, which are one. It's an arbitrary number. It could be one kilowatt hour, one megawatt hour, one whatever, 10 or 15. The, pat, the point is the pattern. It's one here. Then we have to figure out, well, how much solar production will we need if we are going to take the uh, uh, solar production and then in this case we have no solar production once we start the lights because the sun's going down excuse me so the the we need to take and discharge a battery to get there the question is how much do we need now this is fairly simple i just summed up all the lights i said okay let's just try something let's just take the Solar, uh, uh, let's take five, a goal seek. We'll use a goal seek in a minute. And let's just multiply the five by the solar production. And then we'll see, well, we'll charge the, the, the batteries when we have the sunlight. And then we'll discharge them. And our net battery will, usage will be zero. Of course, we'll make all the adjustments for the depth of discharge and uh, capacity losses and all those sort of factors elsewhere. And again, I'm trying to show you that uh, 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 this is this can be all incorporated in our kind of one or two line uh, uh, um, LCOE analysis. Now the maximum amount of solar we had right here was 0.79, so that's the amount of solar capacity we want in kW. I'll put maybe capacity in kW. And we need five for for that capacity. We need five hours of discharge, five kilowatt hours in this case. And then I assert that we can take the amount of battery charge and discharge, our our, our hours, and divide that by the capacity, and that's our storage. So if we needed this this uh, uh, solar 
for simply charging our batteries, we'd need to put in, and it's just a counting kind of game, we need to put in 6.33 of uh, 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 hours of storage. And then we need to pay 100 for the storage, but we can't really use it all because we have this depth of discharge problem. So I put that in and I said, okay, if we're only paying 100, then now, now let's pretend it was 300. Let's make this into a horrible kind of case. And this is the net amount we pay, and, and we multiply the hours by the total cost, including the kind of the gross up for the depth of discharge. And then, well, let's make a kind of worst case, and let's say the battery only has an eight-year life. Okay, I'm kind of redoing things, so we have a much higher carrying charge. And we can see right now, here's the cost of the, of the rooftop solar, and here's the battery. And it kind of kills us, but we're not even finished, because then we have this, uh, uh, th this loss, and we, we, we need more battery capacity than we get so we'll only get say we'll get 10 percent less of a capacity factor when we're finished that's our total cost of the capacity and then we can do our normal kind of taking the total cost uh, multiplying by a thousand dividing and all this and then i made finally made a decent adjustment kind of for the here's our one of our uh, um, uh, uh, c capacity and I said okay well this is one per kilowatt hour so we have to multiply that by our six and we end up with this horrible expensive kind of thing if we could at least in this case get it down to 100 and which is low I know maybe uh, whatever let's put minus eight percent here and then we have the extremely maybe 0.5 for the for the oh god the, the o and m and then if we could really make a battery of 20 and i forgot what kind of degradation we have here we have one percent degradation then our carrying charge is way down and our cost is kind of lower than the retail cost of uh, 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 this is USD 7 cents per kilowatt hour. Not so bad. We can do that for lighting. Now let's go to our count again. And let's use this refrigerator thing. So again, I, I, uh, I've got all these other files open. Uh, our refrigerator, this for some reason, they said we don't need this refrigerator to start until the day. I I should know more about refrigerators, why that's the case, but that's kind of more coincident with the, 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 the load. And how do we incorporate that sort of end use into our analysis? In that case, we put the ones of the uh, refrigerator just like we did for the uh, lighting, and now it's a little bit different. I need to... Uh, whatever I guess it's not that different and then I put some solar here and we get the uh, uh, solar production and then we we, we got to make sure first of all when we do this charge this is a, a, a maximum state well, we only take if it's positive so if the uh, uh, the the amount we need is less than the amount of solar power then we got to charge it discharge it sorry on the other hand if we have some more solar power then we can discharge it okay and the, the, this uh, this is all c18 this is all 12 multiplied by our, uh, our, our uh, capacity okay and the maximum capacity we get in the whole thing that's the amount of panels we need we need 1.9 i suppose this will be ac power i should be a little bit careful with ac uh, and dc and then in that case here's the amount of battery if we accumulate all the battery this is the amount 
3.67 is the total amount of discharge we required, which is a lot different than this case. And uh, um, we should take that storage in terms of kwh divide it by the kw ac kw really of solar and we can fit that into our little lcoe model so it's um possible 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 possible, possible to to uh to do this sort of thing and incorporate all that in our framework so now let's put a really best case let's say we we have this uh, we only need in this case we only need 3.67 of storage for our battery so that again that's driven is that the, is that the right number i have three point no 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 it was excuse me it was 1.94 we only need 1.94 kilowatt hours because a lot of the storage comes where a lot of the battery comes in, uh, uh, during the daytime, and we put our carrying charge rate. And now we've we've for for uh, for getting our refrigerator low, and we have a much more reasonable thing. Now, of course, you can do that with all sorts of different things, but again, I think the key in this is our counting. And the key is to kind of put the demand next to the supply and see the deficit and the excess. Okay, that's enough of this video, and I've got to edit it.